Hong Kong is giving on and off rain today, and we will find something to sketch anyway. What is up? Welcome back to my channel. I am Becky and I'm your local urban sketcher from Hong Kong. So, um, my plan today is actually we're going to go sketch on a tram. We're just going to try and get a back seat. And I recently discovered this trick, which let me show you right now. So, using my camera, with kept in the bag made by my mom. Shout out to mom. So, Insta360 Go 2 camera, which I've been using all this time. This is the camera that I've been using to record all my sketches. It's this little tiny camera. It's magnetic. And the beauty of it is, because it's magnetic, I can kind of mount it in weird places. So I did recently mount this camera onto a bus uh, when I was there. And I basically, I have this mount and below here, it has this like sticky kind of surface, which I don't want to touch because I want to use it later. It's called a pivot stand. Let me see if I can zoom in for that. Pivot stand, pivot stand, pivot stand, pivot stand. There you go. It's called a pivot stand. So my plan is to mount the camera onto like a kind of a side of a window like this, have the camera face down, and I can sketch right here. Because I like sketching people so much, uh, especially during commutes, I just thought that would be like a great idea for me to do. So the plan is to find a tram and we will do that setup and we'll get on sketching. Because of the rain, people I feel like would be a little bit more inclined to take the public transport. But I'm just hoping that that is not the case. Because I kind of want to have like an empty bag because you know I'm like going to be recording and setting up all these things. I don't want to be squished into a corner and sketch. I was hoping to have like the tram a little bit to myself on the top deck at the back part. Um, but we'll see. We'll only know if we try, right? All right. Got my backpack. Let's go. I must say, Hong Kong trams are like one of my favorite ways to go about Hong Kong. Um, sadly, it's only available on the Hong Kong Island side, which is generally the southmost, well, not the southmost, the southern part of Hong Kong. And there is a tram that goes all the way um, kind of near the coastal area where it goes from east to west and it's only available here and I work here around this island but I don't normally live here so I don't get to ride it that often so when I am presented with a chance to ride the tram I would kind of want to grab it and I would love to take you guys along with me so if I'm not mistaken trams are sort of a legacy transportation left behind from um, the British colony era, which I guess it makes sense because there are trams in the UK too, I think. And um, it's probably one of the cheapest mode of transports out there. Currently, the price of a tram ride, which they just raised recently, is like three Hong Kong dollars per ride, no matter how long you take the line. And that is less than 50 cents US dollars, which I think is a pretty, pretty sweet deal for such a good iconic experience. So yeah, I think what we're going to try to do now is I'm walking currently to the tram station um, is we're going to try and find a tram that is least or like less crowded and then we're going to get on board and start sketching. Well, come on this ride with me. So the sky is getting slightly darker and I might have to jump on a tram sooner rather than later. But yeah. I just wanted to show you guys that there is basically a lot of public transportation available currently and tram is just one of them. So we do have this tram that is just about to leave across the street. These are bus stops, so people are actually lining up for the bus. And actually, if you go a little bit that way, there's a train station right there. So there is basically a lot of choices for public transport. Um, Generally, they take maybe about similar timings as well. Like our train, um, our subway, MTR runs every like maybe three to five minutes, or maybe even eight to ten minutes if there is a if it's on a less populated line. But generally speaking, it's quite good in terms of accessibility. So really, it's just a choice of what of what you want to do. Oh, we actually also have. Let me just show you. 
A ferry. We have a ferry right here, um, which is currently on that side. So that is north. And you can also board that to go places. So really, you just have to choose your mode of transport, like choose your, choose your weapon, choose your mode of transport. And you can basically get where you want to go, how you want to get there. Okay, the thunder just grumbled. And because I've been blabbing and trying to record some footage for you guys, I have missed like the slew of tramps that just passed by, which makes for good footage. But now I'm just trying to wait to see if a tram pops by. And if it's quite empty, we're going to go up top. First things first, we need to set up the camera and try to perch it on this little ledge that is um, in between our seats and the window. And we don't have a lot of space. So what I'm going to do is because this pivot stand has, um, you're able to kind of rotate the camera in any way, I'm just going to put it sort of 90 degrees. So pivoting away, ha, pun intended. Pivoting away from our original strategy to do it at a full straight line into a 90 degree situation. Tilting the camera up to make sure that we get the best view possible to record our real-time sketch footage. All right, so we are actually sketching this in real time, which I think um, in the previous sketches, usually we speed up the clips a little bit or it takes maybe about 10, 20 ish minutes to sketch for this tram ride. So I didn't know how much time I had. The point from where I got on and where I intend to get off was only like a seven minute ride and i kind of knew that i wouldn't make it but i knew if i made it say like to the end of the tram line it would take maybe about 15 minutes like it was a really short tram ride so i did try to sketch as quickly as possible and i tried to do so by eliminating all unnecessary details and kind of focus on just what i see here right in front of me so what i'm seeing actually is a passenger at the very front end of the tram um, it's just a guy reading a newspaper and I'm just trying to pin down his characteristics, his the shape of his head, his hair, how he's holding up the newspaper and how the tram interior, I guess, is uh, the spatial relation between the tram interior to himself. My experience with sketching on a moving vehicle is that there's always going to be someone in your way because apart from people or passengers who are sitting down on the seats of the public transport, which is maybe the bus or the tram or the subway, there's always going to be people standing as well when there's not enough seats or if they're just walking um, in between carts or trying to make their way in and out of the vehicle. So this is what happened a lot. So I'm kind of like craning my neck a little bit in order to get a better view of this person and just trying to sketch what I can see. And if something is covered, then I will shift my attention away and sketch maybe another part and i also have to deal with the changing light which um, you can see a little bit in the video it's not too drastic since it's not time lapse but the lights do flicker because it's a particularly cloudy and rainy day uh, so with the cloud movements also comes the light movements that's also part of the reason why i did start with a pen sketch and didn't go straight into watercolor because i just wanted the bones of this sketch to kind of be in place first before I decided to do anything and honestly I didn't even think that I had time for watercolor but eventually I did and I did all of this like under um, 10 minutes and I think part of the reason is because I kept the colors pretty flat like I didn't add a lot of depth to the color and also I didn't have time to because the man kind of got off at the end um, towards the end of my sketch so there was only so much color that I could attribute to him and I'm just building on shapes after one after the other so I'm not really using like a typical figure sketch I guess where you kind of do the skeleton first and then you build the body shape out of it I'm just doing um, lines in relation to one another so I always start with the head first and the reason for that is because I know that's kind of where um, if you look at a person that's kind of one of the first places that you look is the head and I wanted that to fit in the painting like I don't I don't really mind if like the cuff of his like, ankles don't fit in the painting uh, but I just want everything in relation to like as close as possible to the head to be within the frame or within the sketch itself. So um, that's why I always start with the head and then I build out slowly to like the neck, the shoulders and all that. And I must say that actually having people um, being masked up, uh, at least here in Hong Kong, it's still 
Um, we're still required to wear masks everywhere, but even without the requirement, I think it's just ingrained in a habit for people in Hong Kong to wear a mask everywhere. And it, it has made sketching a lot easier, although now I am very confident in sketching like the outline of people, and I have no clue how to sketch noses and mouths. But that's something that I'll pick up when I need to, I think. Um, that's, that's kind of always the case, right? You just um, pick up knowledge and then you only implement it when you really, really need to. And here I finally decided like, oh, I'm actually done sketching everything within like five minutes. And I do have some time before I need to go. So I wanted to capture a little bit of the gloomy sky. But then I quickly ran into a problem, which is that everything is kind of gloomy. So everything is a little bit gray and I don't really have time to build out the depths and such. Um, and I didn't really have time to differentiate like the warm gray, the cool gray, and like what is like the outside building and also the view of the the outside of the tram changes all the time because we are on a moving tram so sometimes it's like greenery as we're passing through a park and sometimes it's just buildings with all the different concrete colors or all the different neon lights so it's a little bit tricky but um but i tried to kind of at the end i think i did choose to go with some greenery in order to make it quite distinctive from the tram that was undisputably dull gray from the inside um, here I mistakenly colored the mask in some skin color so what I'm doing is I'm trying to scrub it away um, getting some water on that part cleaning up my brush and then picking it up with the with the paper towel and then I'm just gonna cover it with like a minty turquoise uh, color and that way the mask kind of its color. I mean, it's not like pure mint turquoise. There's a little bit of that skin tone beige in it still, but it makes for a muted mint that works for a mask. So I'm just slowly adding in colors where I see fit. Um, I'm careful not to leave any white in the sketch. I know that basically like the shirt is white, the newspaper is white-ish and such, but because of the gloomy lighting that casts light on the white, uh, the white t-shirt isn't pure white. So I try to catch that as well, and I try to make it as minimal as possible, just dilute a little bit of color into like a very watery wash. And because of that, I didn't dare to do the um, straps, is it, on the his kind of like overall top, uh, because I knew that it would kind of bleed into the shirt, so I have to move on to other areas. So um, this is a common thing with watercolor, is you just need a... Make sure you know which area is wet and which one isn't. And you, this, you do get used to it um, with time. Also because it's very dependent on your climate, your humidity, and what's, uh, how much water you use on your paper. But you do get a sense of it after a while. And you can always touch it, really, if you're unsure if your paper is still wet or if the section you want to touch on is still wet or not. And really, we're almost nearing the end of the sketch. It's quite fast. Um, this isn't a sketch that I spent a lot of time on, but and it's not really something that I probably would sell either, but it did serve as a really cool memory because I never recorded myself sketching on a tram. And I think it's pretty cool to have this kind of in the books, especially because I really like sketching on public transport. And I already did a short, a YouTube short on sketching on a bus. Maybe I'll do a full video of it one day with a similar technique where I just like strap my camera onto the wall and kind of just do my own thing. And maybe one day I'll figure out the train. That one is a little bit trickier. I'm guessing for that one, I would have to like intentionally get on one train at the very beginning of the line just to make sure that I get a seat with a convenient spot to place a camera and record my whole process and then go all the way to the end. Um, Although the thing with train is like people come and go a lot quicker than they do on buses and trams. But that's just part of the fun of public transport sketching, really. I love it. I love it a lot. I think it, it just makes up so much of my daily life that I do want to have more specific records of it. And yeah, that's about it for our sketch. Maybe you can do something similar now that you've seen how quick it is to whip something up like this together. did it guys i honestly didn't know how we pulled that off but we did it i mean the drawing did get a little bit wonky at times 
but I am glad that you came along with me to the journey. Hope you guys enjoyed this little sketch. And as always, I've been Becky, you've been awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy sketching, bye. Go to the gate.